When it comes to making clocks, there are so many different ways you can go about it. So many different shapes, designs, and materials you can use. It, the sky is the limit, really. For this one in particular, we're gonna be using my Onefinity CNC machine for the majority of the work. And that includes engraving some text and specific artwork that was sent to me by a customer. So let's get into it. So for this project, I'm gonna be using these rounds from a local hardware store. It's a Teak round and it's 600 by 18 millimeters. And a nice thing about this is, it comes pre-cut obviously, and it's pretty much ready to go as it is. And we're gonna turn this into something like this. So the first thing to do is just to give it a light sand with a 120 grit sandpaper, which is perfectly fine. Uh, we're just taking off just that little top layer and um, getting it ready for staining. So to stain this, I'm gonna be using a water-based walnut stain. And to apply this, I'm just using an old rag. Um, I don't really like using a paintbrush because it generally leaves marks and I've, I just find that this works for me. So I'm putting on not much at all and just working that into the grain, working with the grain as well. And the advantage for me doing it this way is basically that I'm not getting these dark spots where you got pooling uh, from the, the stain. Once the stain is dry, I will seal it with a clear coat of polyurethane and just do a light sand between coats. For the clock face, I'm just going to use some black acrylic that I've got left over and I'm not going to do numbers, I'm just going to do these little rectangular shapes. And basically what I'm going to do with these is mount them all the way around the outer edge and I'm just going to measure more or less where I want them to be. Now we're going to set up our job size and we'll make it slightly bigger. So 610 by 610 by 18 millimeters is perfectly fine. Date and position is going to be in the center and we'll click OK. Next, we want to create the circle, the shape of our clock. So we'll do that at a 600 millimeter diameter and click create. Right, next thing to do is create an offset. So we select our circle, create offset and we're doing this inwards by the measurement we just took where we want those pieces to be so 15 millimeters in and we just click offset right the next step is to make the placeholders for those little acrylic pieces so those are going to be rectangles 4.5 by uh, i think 20 25 millimeters on this one and we just basically click create and close. So next we're just gonna move this slightly so that it lines up with that inside circle. So click on that and then just drag it up. And if I zoom in, you'll see it's, it's pretty much just touching it. That's all we want. So the next thing we wanna do is make a copy of this and uh, we're gonna use this circular copy feature or function. So we're gonna do number of items four and we're gonna change this to step angle 90 degrees. And then for X and Y position, we wanna make sure that those are both zero. So it works from the center outwards. So now we've got our 12, three, six and nine. The next thing we want to do is basically create the hours in between and those ones are a little bit smaller at 15 millimeters high by 4.5. So again, same procedure, we just create one of those and then move it all the way to the outer edge like we've done here. And then we're basically going to go and do another circular copy. And this time around we're going to do 360 degrees because we want to go all the way around and change the number of items to 12. Again, on your X, Y, uh, we'll make both of them zero and click copy. 
So now you can see you've got your hours all the way around from 12 back again to 12. But you'll also see that we've got duplicate ones on the 12, 3 and 9. So we're just going to go in and delete those because um, yeah, we obviously don't need those. After you've deleted those extra rectangles, you can also delete the inside circle. And what's left is your clock face. Next thing to do is select everything and then deselect the outside ring because we're not going to need that. We just want to do a toolpath for these hours. So let's head over to pocket toolpath. And I already know that I'm going to make this 1.5 millimeter deep because uh, my acrylic is only three millimeters. So I basically just want to hide it in or, or be able to push it into the surface. So let's change our depth of cut as well. You could do this in one go. I'm going to go with three passes and we'll just rename this. Then we click preview toolpaths and this is basically what the face of this clock is going to look like. Click close and then we can save this one. The next thing to do is to measure the size of this movement that we're going to be using. They're generally the same size, about 57 millimeters. So heading back into VCarve, let's click 2D view and we're going to create a rectangle for this. And again, we want to make sure that your X and Y is set to zero. So we work from the center and the size is 57 millimeters and then click create. And while we're at it, we might as well do the uh, cutout for the shaft. And this again is on X, Y, zero, and it's 8.2 millimeters in this case. Next thing to do is create a toolpath. So we're gonna click the shape for the clock movement, and we are gonna do a pocket toolpath on this one. And I've measured this, and it's gonna be about 10 millimeters deep. And we'll just change the bit as well the end mill and I'm going to do a down cut spiral and select and we're also going to do some ramp plunge moves about 20 millimeters and edit the uh, depth of cut and I'm happy with six passes on this one and click OK and then I'm just going to give this a name and we'll call, we'll call this movement pocket and click calculate and we're not going to preview that just yet just click close and go back to 2d view because we're going to be cutting this uh, shaft as well at the same time so selecting that and then we go back to our toolpaths and this time we're going to go and do a profile toolpath on the inside and we're going to go with about 18.3 millimeters. So we want to go through the clock uh, face on the other side. And for this, I'm going to do a total depth of cut, 13 passes. And we're just going to give this a name as well. Um, it actually doesn't matter really because we're going to merge these two in a second. Right, so let's just have a look and see what that looks like. Perfect. So obviously this is going to happen on the back side of the clock. So don't worry that it's showing up on the front. It's not an issue. We'll get to that in a second. So click close and then select those two toolpaths and merge. And then you can give it a name if you like. So we'll just call it movement and click merge toolpaths. And then we can click save. Right, so the next thing I want to do is import some artwork. And I'm just going to basically move this around a bit so it sits perfectly on the bottom half of this clock face. And just aligning it. And then what we're going to do is create another toolpath. And in this case, we're going to do a V carve. And as you can see, I've already got a 90 degree V bit selected or tool. And we're just going to rename this to just give it a name so you know what it is. I'm just going to call it Art Carve and click OK. 
calculate and if you want you can preview that and that looks pretty good for what we want to do right next we're going to do the same with the words that we need to engrave and i'm just going to resize this again and then what we're going to do is do another v carve we're using the same tool bit and we're just going to rename this so we know which part we are working with when we select the file click calculate and if you want you can do a preview Now that we've finished our tool pass, we can move along and get our round ready for engraving. Um, what I'm going to be doing is sticking this down with some double sided tape. I ran out of blue painters tape, so I'm just using normal white masking tape. Works exactly the same way really. And what I'm going to be doing is sticking this down onto a piece of scrap MDF instead of straight to the spoil board. And the reason I'm doing it this way is because I'm now able to move this around exactly where I want it and align it up with that tool bit. If you were to stick it down to your spoil board itself, you pretty much have to get it spot on right from the start, which can be pretty tricky. With our round set up and everything ready to go, we can now cut the slot for or the pocket for this movement and as you can see that fits pretty perfectly in there it's got a little bit of space and obviously it's going to be going down this way around next we're going to flip this around and basically just repeat the same process um, sticking it down with some double sided tape and then lining it up exactly the way we want it Before we actually do any carving on the front side, I'm going to apply some aura masking. If you haven't used this before, I can definitely recommend it. It is the best thing. It's a bit pricey, but it's really, really good. And um, it just makes life a lot easier when you have to paint something. After the engraving, I usually go around and just have a look and see if there are any pieces of plastic just basically sticking to the surface. And this is usually not an issue. It's, it's literally small pieces like this. And I'm just picking them off because you don't want to be painting over those and getting them caught in your paintwork. After picking off all those little pieces, I can go over and just do like a base coat. Now, normally I can just spray paint this on but I ran out so paintbrush it is and I'm really just roughing it going over all the letters and all the little corners and things just in making sure that I get a good coat all over and when it's all painted uh, this is pretty much what it looks like kind of looks like a big mess but as soon as you start peeling this aura masking that's when the magic happens And as you can see, once that aura masking comes off, you're left with beautiful crisp lines. And you're going to struggle doing that by hand if you do not use something like this masking. Finishing off the face of this clock, I'm going to be sticking down these little acrylic cutouts that I made earlier. Now these slots that I've cut uh, or carved 
are basically so tight you can almost just press them in and you don't need to put any glue in them but I'd hate to have one of these pop out or something so I'm just gonna put like a tiny 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 bit of glue on each of them and then just press them in there One thing I really like doing is adding these little felt pads on the bottom edge. And what that does is it prevents the bottom of the clock or the frame or whatever it is you're using to sticking to a wall. And when you move it, it sometimes peels off the paint. And this basically prevents that, plus it hangs a little bit more straight up and down. The other thing I need to do is just swap out these movements uh, for one with a longer shaft just to lift those hands a little bit further away from the surface of the clock. Just one thing to note, when you are putting on this nut and washer on the front, just do them up hand tight or finger tight so you don't need to crank down on it. And the last thing to do is just peel off the protective layer on the acrylic. And there we go. That's how I made this clock. I know this has been a very quick overview of uh, a lot of things actually that needs to be covered. So I will definitely be making some more videos on these and break it down even further. So if you've got any questions or suggestions or would like to see anything in particular, just leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.